Hey, what's going on guys? Today, I just want to give a brief recap of my 2017 Colorado Rockies franchise. I played last year in 2016, and we actually went 87-75, so we only finished a couple games out of the wild card. We made a really good stretch down the run, but it wasn't enough. But in 2017, I hope that our season turned out much better. So far, as you'll see, it hasn't. We're 13 and a half back despite already being 72 games into the season. We're four games under 500, 34 and 38. The Giants are 44 and 28, and the Dodgers are having a crazy season at 47 and 24. Clayton Kershaw has got a really crazy year going on. He's got a .62 ERA, something like that. I mean, the Dodgers are having a really crazy season. However, the good news: we're only four games back of the Cardinals right now for the for the second wild card spot. Looking at our lineup, Charlie Blackman, one of the more familiar faces on this team, is getting lead off. He's on a really hot streak right now. A few weeks ago, he was down to 230, and I was actually contemplating taking him out of the leadoff spot. But he's turned it around. He's hitting 261, six home runs. And the other stat, he's got 12 stolen bases, which is really key for us having him in the leadoff spot. DJ LeMay is hitting 269. Two home runs, 22 RBIs. He's a really good complement behind Blackman with that speed. He's another guy that started he started to struggle early. He was down at about 242 a few weeks ago, and he's really started to heat up again. Trevor Story, he was actually my number six hitter for the first two months of the year, and because of cold streaks, as you can see it, that I'll get to, I've moved Trevor Story up to the number three spot. He's hitting 328, 12 home runs, 39 RBIs. He won Rookie of the Year last year. He hit over 20 home runs. I'm sorry, he, yeah, he hit 23 home runs, 64 RBIs, only a 241 average, but he's really improving on that aspect this year, and he's a guy that is probably my best all-around player right now. Now we get to the heart of the Rockies lineup. The normal, Normally the 3-4-5 hitters are all playing really cold right now. Carlos Gonzalez, he's actually my big story this year because he's a free agent at the end of the year, and he's going to command around $20 million. I actually have... 28 million in my payroll to spend as of this moment, which may go up at the end of the year. However, as of right now at 34 and 38, I may end up trading him at the deadline. I'm not really sure. I want to keep him around. Obviously, he's a really good player, but he's not playing up to par. And if I'm nowhere near the playoff race in August or at the end of July, and I think that maybe my team could use some more prospects or something else. I think Carlos Gonzalez could be traded. He's only hitting 258. He's got 17 home runs. He started the year really well. He hit 10 home runs in the month of April. And while the power has been there on and off, even though we're in mid-June, he's hit only 7 home runs, but he's really cooled off with his average as of late. Nolan Arenado, who's supposed to be one of the premier third basemen in baseball, he's down to 255 and only has 9 home runs this year. He's another guy that's really alarming, but I'm not in a panic stage with him yet. He still has a few more years under control with the team. But I'm hoping that by then he really turns his performance up. Ben Paulson, who was actually a really consistent hitter for me last year, he's only hitting 247 and nine home runs. The power is there, but the average isn't. Rafael Inua was a guy I recently called up because of injuries. He's hitting 357. He's been a guy I've called off the bench the last few weeks and I don't know how long he'll stay on the major league roster but he's making the most of his opportunity Nick Hundley I re-signed this offseason and he started the year on the disabled list he had a bro uh, I believe it was a broken wrist or a sprained wrist that he suffered a few weeks into the year he's come back he's only hitting 233 but he's delivered me a few clutch hits here and there Gregor Blanco, I signed this offseason to a one-year deal to, to platoon with Gerardo Parra. Blanco was actually not performing well a few weeks ago and was only hitting about 210, and he's played well the last few weeks. He's up to 256. On the bench, Kyle Parker I just called up because of the injury, as I said, to Gerardo Parra. I don't know how long Kyle Parker is going to be on the Major League roster. Chris Nelson, he's been one of he's been my corner infield bench player this year. He's only hitting 212. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna have him on the roster. 
Dustin Garneau, he's the backup catcher as of this moment. I signed Chris Lionetta this offseason. Chris wasn't playing that well, but then he he suffered a shin injury. So I recently called Garneau up. Brandon Barnes was my fifth outfielder when Parra was on the roster. Now he's my main outfielder coming off the bench. He's actually one of my first guys I go to in a pinch hit situation. He's hitting 276 and three home runs, 13 RBIs. He's actually been pretty decent for me off the bench. And I think he's making the most of his opportunities. I think he's going to stay on the Major League roster for the remaining of the season. My starting pitching has been really up and down all season. I traded for Jose Quintana this offseason from the Chicago White Sox, and he's been no doubt my best starting pitcher. He's got a 2.64 ERA, a 1.05 width, and even though he's 4-4, four and four, the record doesn't show how good of a year Quintana has. Drew Smiley I required at the trade deadline this last season and at the end of July. I traded Jake McGee, who was my closing pitcher, back to Tampa Bay for Drew Smiley and Brandon Jennings. I let Jennings go this offseason as I didn't feel he was worth the money. But I kept Smiley as he was under control anyways. But Smiley is a 4.38 ERA this, this year, a 1.39 whip. He really hasn't been pitching all that well. But at the end of the day, he's got some of the best stuff on my starting rotation. John Gray, who's one of the top prospects for the Rockies, he's actually in his rookie year currently in, in real life. But in my franchise, he did okay last year. This year, though, he's got a 5.38 ERA, and up until a couple starts ago, he's actually hovering over 6. With a 1.66 whip as well, it shows he's not having a good year and may be sent down to AAA to do some tuning. Jordan Lyles started the year down in AAA. I didn't have room for him on the starting rotation as I had Tyler Matzik as well. And last year, Jordan actually had 200 innings pitched and was one of my most consistent pitchers. But coming out of spring training, he just wasn't good enough. And I thought it'd be better to send him down to AAA. But he played well down there. And once Matzik was hurt, I called Lyles up. And he's been spectacular. 3.12 ERA. He's been one of he's once again been one of my most consistent pitchers. Jorge De La Rosa, who's the longest tenure to Rocky, I re-signed him this offseason to a one-year deal, despite his old age. At 36. Jorge's actually been next to Quintana, one of my best pitchers with a 2.89 ERA. Another guy that Despite the good numbers, doesn't have a good record at 4-6, and six, but trust me, De La Rosa has been very good for me this year. The bullpen for the most part has been pretty good. Christian Bergman is my long relief pitcher, and the 5.18 ERA is a little inflated considering the last couple of games. He came up in mop-up duty and had a couple bad outings, but before that was actually a considerment for a starting pitching spot. He hasn't pitched that good in the last couple outings, but trust me, he's actually been really consistent for me the last couple years coming out of the bullpen, either in mop-up duty or long relief duty. Jason Mott ended the year as my closer last year once I traded Jake McGee, and he's been, he was really good then, and he's really good now. A 2.03 ERA, and he's got more than a strikeout per inning. Chad Qualls, Chad Qualls was a recent call-up. He's got a 2.61 ERA, and he's been taking, taking advantage of the time he's had on the Major League roster. Tom Wilson, I actually acquired in a trade deadline deal with Sam Dyson from Texas at the trade deadline last year. And wilson has been pitching very well, 2.83 ERA and a 1.00 whip, which I actually think is a really good statistic for relief pitchers, considering most of the time they do inherit runners. A whip is a pretty important stack because it's considering how many more base runners they're letting on. Sam Dyson's been no doubt my best relief pitcher. A .57 ERA and a .80 whip. Dyson's been the go-to guy out of the bullpen in a jam and he's gotten me out of almost all of them. Jerry Blivens I signed this whole season as a lefty specialist and I've used him a little bit more than just the lefty specialist and up until a week or so ago, he was actually having a really good year and then had a couple bad outings. The 5.26 ERA and 1.75 whip aren't good numbers for him, but he has been pretty reliable for me. Though I think right now he may go back to just being a lefty specialist. Houston Street I traded for this offseason from the LA Angels, bringing him back to Colorado because I needed a closer and I wasn't able to sign one. 
and instead of having Mott be my closer again, I decided to get Houston Street as I was able to get him for just a few minor league players. However, this season he has six blown saves. He has 19 saves, but a 4.66 ERA, a 1.24 whip, and like I said, the six blown saves, he hasn't had that good of a year. I'm considering maybe taking him out of the closing role, depending on his next few, next few closing opportunities for Jason Mott, because I know what I'm getting out of Jason Mott. But until then, we'll see. As you can see, my disabled list is pretty full. We've been banged up with injuries a lot this year. Tyler Matzik was the first of them. He suffered a dislocated shoulder about three or four weeks into the season. His 6.16 ERA was pretty bad, so actually having him go on the disabled list wasn't the worst thing in the world to happen to my team. Because of what's going on with my starting rotation, I actually might send Matzik down to AAA because he ha did have a bad performance to start the year. He may be called up depending on how well he does after going down to the minors, but for now, when Matsy comes back, I don't think he's going to be at the Major League roster. Gerardo Parra was recently injured and was hitting 278 in platoon with Blanco. However, a broken shin, he's out two to three months, so he won't be back until late August, early September at best. Daniel Descalso was my, my middle infielder off the bench. Didn't get many opportunities, was only hitting 247, but he fractured his wrist and I probably won't see him for no until after the All-Star break. Chris Iannetta I did sign in the offseason as previously mentioned. He was my backup catcher. He wasn't doing that well, only a 223 average. And when Humley was out, it was a real struggle there in that part of the lineup. He fractured his shin actually a day or two after Parra broke his shin. David Dahl is no noteworthy because of the fractured foot, putting him on the DL for two to three months at the beginning of the season. He was actually close to getting called up on the Major League roster as he's probably my most ready prospect. Uh, once he comes off the DL, he's going to be sent down to AAA, and depending on how well he does, he could be called up for Kyle Parker. I'm on a really cold streak right now. I've lost 7 of 9. And Miami's in town. Miami's doing pretty awful. So I'm hoping to get these two wins to at least salvage this homestand. And pick up some momentum for this upcoming road trip. John Gray takes on Jose Fernandez in the next matchup. And as soon as I get that game done, I'll post that up.